Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to finish chapter 3. If you remember, Mole had fallen over something and Ratty had uh, found it and dug it up and he was very excited and was dancing around it. And Mole was just going over to have a look for himself. So, well he said at last slowly, I see it right enough, seen the same sort of thing before lots of times. Familiar object I call it, a door scraper. Well what of it, why dance jigs around a door scraper? But don't you see what it means, you dull-witted animal, cried the rat impatiently. Of course I see what it means, replied the mole. It simply means that some very careless and forgetful person has left his door scraper lying around in the middle of the wild wood, just where it's sure to trip everyone up. Very thoughtless of him, I call it. When I get home, I shall go and complain about it too, to somebody or other. See if I don't. Oh dear, oh dear, cried the rat in despair at his obtuseness. Here, stop arguing and come and scrape. And he set to work again and made the snow fly in all directions around him. After some further toil, his efforts were rewarded, and a very shabby doormat lay exposed to view. There, what did I tell you? exclaimed the rat in great triumph. Absolutely nothing whatever, replied the mole with perfect truthfulness. Well now, he went on, you seem to have found another piece of domestic litter, done for and thrown away. I suppose you're perfectly happy. Better go ahead and dance your jig around it, round it if you've got to, and get it over. Then perhaps we can go on and not waste any more time over rubbish heaps. Can we eat a doormat? Or sleep under a doormat? Or sit on a doormat and sledge home over the snow on it? You exasperating rodent. Do you mean to say, cried the excited rat, that this doormat doesn't tell you anything? Really, rat, said the mole quite pettishly. I think we've had enough of this folly. Who ever heard of a doormat telling anyone anything? They simply don't do it. They are not that sort at all. Doormats know their place. Now look here, you thick-headed beast, replied the rat, really angry. This must stop, not another word, but scrape, scrape and scratch and dig and hunt around. Especially on the sides of the hummocks if you want to sleep dry and warm tonight, for it's our last chance. The rat attacked the snowbank beside them with ardour, probing with his cudgel everywhere, then digging with fury. And the mole scraped busily too, more to oblige the rat than for any other reason, for his opinion was that his friend was getting light-headed. Some ten minutes hard work and the point of rat's cudgel struck something that sounded hollow. He worked, till he, he worked till he could get a paw through and feel, then he called the mole to come and help him. Hard at it went the two animals, till at last the result of their labours stood full in view of the astonished and hitherto incredulous mole. In the side of what seemed to be a snowbank stood a solid-looking little door, painted a dark green. An iron bell pull hung by the side, and below it, on a small brass plate, neatly engraved in square capital letters, they could read by the aid of moonlight, Mr Badger. The mole fell backwards on the snow from sheer surprise and delight. Rat! he cried in penitence. You're a wonder. A real wonder, that's what you are. I see it all now. You argued it out, step by step, in that wise head of yours, from the very moment that I fell and cut my shin, and you looked at the cut, and at once your majestic mind said to itself, Door scraper. And then you turned to and found this very door scraper that had done it. Did you stop there? No. Some people would have been quite satisfied, but not you. Your intellect went on working. Let me only just find a doormat, says you to yourself, and my theory is proved, and of course you found your doormat. You're so clever. I believe you can find anything you liked. Now, says you, that door exists, as plain as if I saw it. There's nothing else remains but to be done but to find it. Well, I've read about this sort of thing in books, but I've never come across it before in real life. You ought to go where you'll be properly appreciated. You're simply wasted here among us fellows. If only I had your head, head ratty. But as you haven't interrupted the rat rather unkindly, I suppose you're going to sit in the snow all night and talk. Get up at once and hang on that bell pull, you see there, and ring as hard, as hard as you can, while I hammer. While the rat attacked the door with his stick, the mole sprang up at the bell pull, clutched it and swung there, both feet well off the ground, and from quite a long way off they could faintly hear a deep-toned bell respond. Well, that's the end of chapter three. And will Mr Badger be in? Will anyone be in? Will they get inside, away from the dark and the cold? Let's find out in chapter 4. See you soon. Stay safe. 
Stay happy and keep reading. Bye.